Chytrid is the most deadly animal pathogen that we have ever seen on our planet. And we know it has directly contributed to the extinction of over 90 frogs and amphibian species, which is just absolutely unbelievable. Unfortunately, Australia is home to one of the largest extinction events of vertebrates in the world today. And amphibians in particular in Australia are under threat from chytrid. It's a fungal disease that's spread through the water. And as people move across the globe, they bring that fungus with them and they introduce it to ecosystems that aren't prepared to fight that fungus. There's with more than 500 species threatened today by chytrid, trying to find a single solution that can help answer those questions for each of those species is really, really challenging. But what's unique about Colossal, we're trying to develop technologies that can be impactful, not just to one species, but to all 500 amphibian species. So fungus is really hard to get rid of in the environment. They produce these tiny little microscopic spores that can last for weeks, months, even years in the environment. And we don't have any really good ways of killing those spores and stopping them from infecting animals. So the way that we have to work this is by actually making the frogs resistant to getting infected from the fungus. Chytrid fungus is the single largest driver of extinction in the amphibian world. Unfortunately, we see chytrid on almost every continent where amphibians exist, and it's already responsible for more than 90 amphibian extinctions. With another 500 amphibian species threatened, we have to act quickly to be able to find solutions to save amphibians today. It's one of these uh, pathogens or disease-causing agents that we have very, very few controls up, very, very few um, different ways that we know that we can really prevent the spread of these sorts of diseases. They're just really absolutely devastating. But it starts off a, its life cycle as these little spores. It's like a little single cell and it has a little flagella or a little tail that can move. And this fungus can actually swim through water bodies and it finds an amphibian and it attaches to the skin. And then once it does that, it burrows into the skin and then it spreads as a fungus. So it kind of grows out like a tree in that skin. And when it does it, it actually starts to break that skin barrier apart. And this is particularly devastating for amphibians because they have, they have to have that really uh, intact skin barrier because they're living in water and it's really important for them to balance uh, their fluid levels. And so what happens is as soon as that barrier is broken, they start to lose a lot of their electrolytes, they start to lose their, their balance in that environment and that eventually drives them to die. And as that fungus continues to grow and spread, it really does look like something from The Last of Us, from that TV show where you get these horrible, you know, growths happening all over the skin of these poor little frogs or newts or other amphibians, and they release more spores into the water. So as they grow, this thing kind of produces these bodies that then release more spores, and they can release thousands and thousands of spores even after that frog's dead, it continues to grow on that, that dead frog body and just release these spores into the environment. And then all these things just swim out and get all the other frogs. And it's just absolutely devastating our amphibian populations. So when it comes to chytrid and the impacts that it's had across the globe, I think the hardest hit areas have been, unfortunately, Australia, Central America and South America. These are regions of the globe that have incredibly rich biodiversity and are arguably some of the most important areas that we absolutely need to protect. Although Australia is disproportionately affected by chytrid, chytrid is present on every continent where amphibians exist. It is the most well-distributed wildlife pathogen in the world. Unfortunately, Australian amphibians are as endangered, if not more endangered than any other amphibian group in the world because of the unique endemic nature of those species. But amphibians don't get enough credit for the keystone role that they play in ecosystems. They literally hold the food web together and they're responsible for more biodiversity than mammals or birds. So what people should really understand is that amphibians are what we call an indicator species. They're almost the canary in the coal mine of an ecosystem that lets us know when ecosystems begin to degrade. The way that they're impacted is an early indicator to us that the ecosystem's under threat. So as you're well aware, Colossal loves to take on really large problems and there's no bigger threat to biodiversity loss than chytrid fungal disease. When we started dreaming up ways that we could really make the biggest impact in the fight against chytrid fungal disease, our partners at University of Melbourne were already positioned really well because they've been so impacted in Australia with the population levels rather than individuals like a vaccine would. So the work is related to all the work we do in this lab, where we're really thinking of novel creative tools that we can use to save our most vulnerable species. 
And all of the projects that we work on, whether it's bringing back the Tasmanian tiger or whether it's working on chytrid fungus, they all involve being able to do gene editing in wildlife to actually help them combat some of these uh, things that they're facing. And in the case of chytrid, we're engineering the frog's DNA or the frog genome to actually be able to produce antibodies that will help them defend themselves against these, these infective reagents or these infective particles that are killing them. So I think this, what we're doing here is really a novel application of using these nanobodies, these weird little antibodies that the, the camels, llamas and alpacas make for fighting a novel pathogen or a new emerging disease. And so the way that we're gonna do this is actually engineer these tiny little nanobodies, these little miniature antibodies in an alpaca, uh, and then use that sequence to actually create frogs then that carry that gene that will give them this natural immunity to hopefully the chytrid fungus. And then this is something that we could use this strategy across all of the frog species that are getting you know, terribly impacted by this. And it would give them then an ability to actually fight off this fungus, stop it from breaking that skin barrier, and then all the frogs will survive, which would be incredible. And I think if this strategy is really effective and works incredibly well, it is something that we can use continuously to fight so many different wildlife diseases I think that's something that Colossal is really pushing forward, is really thinking outside the box, looking around in nature to what things are out there that we can co-opt and use to help protect, to really protect our biodiversity and wildlife that we've got left and ensure that we're really putting the brakes on and stopping some of these, you know, mass extinction events that we can control um, by using some of these really new and, and really exciting technologies.